Hi, as you can see from the array of LED displays behind me, uh, I think you can tell that for the last couple years I've been uh, spending some time developing different Arduino based projects that output uh, information using uh, actually a very simple uh, 8 LED by 8 LED, so there's 64 LEDs in this little block uh, display. What I'd like to do in this video is give you a quick overview of some of the projects that I've done and then concentrate uh, specifically on how you can take these displays and mount them on a moving model train or some other thing that might be moving uh, to help gather attention. Uh, this is a basic uh, display module. I started working with these probably three or four years ago. Uh, this has a, a major disadvantage though. If you want to do something like this, this sign here has ten of these units uh, wired up in series so that you get a, a rather wide uh, display. The problem with it is if you want to put them in series you have to connect have to connect them like this. The Arduino goes into the bottom, the, the data inside of the first display then you come out of the top of that display, loop underneath and plug into the next one go for the top of the second one, loop underneath to the third one. So I've got a, a matrix of wires inside of this case hooking up ten of these together. Now recently, at least recently to me, uh, someone came out with a much nicer uh, unit than, than this one where you buy four modules on one circuit board. There's one circuit board that has four of these on it and you simply plug into, uh, in this case, the right-hand side of it with your Arduino, and you can come out the other side and hook up to another one, another one, another one, uh, pretty much, I don't know about as long as you want, but quite a distance. Uh, one other thing I want to mention while I have this in hand, these two displays are set up almost identically, but you'll notice the one on top is a bit easier to read than the one on the bottom. That's because I have a, uh, a red filter uh, attached to the top one and I can show you the difference that you get by putting a piece of red acrylic over the bottom one. You can see when it's on it looks almost identical to the one on top. When I take it off it's not quite as easy to read. Uh, I don't use plexiglass for all of them. I did for this one. You can hear that. But I discovered you can buy self-adhesive uh, red acrylic and I can just take that and lay it on. You can see how much nicer that section is. Uh, I'll put a link to this on my uh, web page. Just found that on eBay. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. This is one of the first things that I built, and it's a static display. I reprogrammed the message uh, by putting it, you know, hooking up to the computer and changing it. I use that at various train shows uh, to let people know the web page of the Pittsburgh Garden Railway Society or the South Hills Model Railroad Club. When it's in my uh, my basement, I simply have it set up like this and it just warns people to stay away from soldering irons. Uh, this one here is a counter. You'll see it's saying 22 right now, and there's a little infrared sensor here, and if I put my hand in front of it, you see now it says 23, 24, and so on. I have one of these at Children's Hospital, and the sensor is right next to the track on our G-Scale Railroad there, and it counts the number of times the train has gone by gives the kids an idea of how active it is, also encourages them, I suppose, to count a bit. Okay, this one here goes out onto the internet using an ESP8266 variant, and it tells me that 177,143 views have been uh, visited upon my web page, or my, my YouTube page, and 832 people are uh, subscribed to it. Up here at the top, uh, again, one of the earlier uh, units that I put together. This has four of the uh, the original uh, type displays. It's showing the temperature in Fahrenheit and in uh, in Celsius just using a little uh, a temperature sensor. Below it is a clock. The interesting thing about the clock, I don't know that I really have a hang up about it, but I really like clocks to be accurate. Well what this clock does, it has an 82, ESP8266 inside that goes out through my wireless network to the internet, grabs the time from Google, and about once a minute resets the time. So when it says it's uh, 6.46, well, hopefully it is exactly 6.46. There's another one down here, and here's the circuit that's inside of this one. 
Here's the 82, or ESP8266, but next to it is a uh, DF player, which is an MP3 player. And at the quarter hour, three quarter hour, um, half hour, and so on, it'll ring out Westminster chimes. There's a little speaker on here. It looks like we're not going to see that during this video because I got about 15 minutes until the next <laughs> next chime, and I don't think I'm going to be talking quite that long. Um, but anyway, these two clocks keep it very accurate time and work very nicely. This up here is really the focus of the next part of the video. It's three of the uh, four unit um, LED matrix devices wired up in parallel and on three HO uh, model railroad cars. Uh, actually on this the next segment I'm going to talk about a G-scale implementation but it's basically the same on an HO one. Okay this is the G-scale uh, implementation of this moving display and uh, we originally had the, the display that I talked about earlier, the one that uh, would advertise the Pittsburgh Garden Railway Society and the uh, South Hills Club, uh, near our layout. And it did get people's attention. They noticed the web page. Uh, I'm, I'm sure some people went there because of that. But because it's a sign that just stays in one place, it's not as noticeable as it could be. I uh, thought it'd be a great idea to try to put that display onto some moving cars. So I took two box cars and cut holes in them for the, uh, the four unit long uh, LED modules. Mounted one, two, three, four, and I'll show you in a minute, there are four on the back too. Uh, that way, no matter where the train is on the layout, whether it's uh, going towards you, away from you, uh, on the front or back of the uh, layout, you'll still be able to see the message. But the frustrating part of this is if you wanted to change the message, uh, the way this sign back here is implemented, you'd have to disconnect it, go to a computer, plug in a USB, edit your uh, uh, your file in uh, uh, in the Arduino IDE, and then reprogram it. Well, I came up with an idea of just using a Bluetooth module with my cell phone. So I don't know how well we can see this uh, with the camera, but I'll start my cell phone up. I'm going to go to a program that's just a serial Bluetooth terminal. And on there, I'm going to go to Bluetooth devices. I'm going to choose one that's called Older One. I'm going to go back to Terminal, and I'm going to click on Connect. And now it says it's connected. Now you'll notice it's saying Pittsburgh Garden Railway Society. Let's have it put my name on there. There are actually macros built into this uh, serial terminal. When it starts up again, with a little bit of luck, you'll see my name. There it is, David G. Bodner. Let's say that we want to switch to the South Hills Club. I'll hit that after David G. Bodner scrolls across. South Hills Model Railroad Club. Let's say that we wanted to just type something in on the keyboard. You put, uh, press in here, you get a keyboard. I'll just type in, hello, there, whoop. send. Now when that finishes up, hello there. So no matter where I am on the layout, I've tested this up to 50 or 60 feet, I can reprogram the sign and that will stay until the next time something is put on there or until you, uh, you shut it down. I also have some commands in here. If I hit this one, which is slash R, what it tells it to do is do it in reverse. I can also change the speed the neat thing about this terminal, if I turn it sideways, I've actually got 10 macros and I can have those programmed for different things. I can also go in here and I can, instead of slash uh, R, I can put in slash I. Let's see what happens when I do that. Now it's inverted, which means it's black letters on a red background, which is kind of cool. Um, I can also do a complete reset. If I do slash X, it resets the whole thing. And now it goes back to Pittsburgh Garden Railway Society because that's the message that's built in um, to the processor. So when you restart it, it goes back to that one. This works beautifully with Android. I don't know if there's an equivalent program for Apple because Apple tends to lock things up and I think this probably wants a, uh, a rooted 
um, machine, whereas the Android, it, it's no problem at all. Now, inside of this, let me take the top off for a minute. These tops are held on by magnets, by the way. There's a magnet here and here and a matching one on the boxcar. Inside, we've got one, two, three, four displays. The Arduino is down here. The Bluetooth module is over here. And these are wired so that this module and this module and then this one and this one are wired as one unit. So this displays the beginning of the message and the tail of the message goes down there. The reason that's important is then all I have to do is do the same thing with this box car. I have a single five conductor cable going between the two of them. Let me disconnect that for a second. And that five conductor cable goes in it goes to this display which displays the message first, second, then third and fourth. So you get the whole, excuse me, third and fourth. So you get the whole message uh, in sequence on the front and on the back. One thing I didn't mention is that the, uh, the power for this whole thing comes from a single um, 18650 lithium cell. This is uh, supposedly 3,000 milliamp hours. It has a protection circuit built into it so that you can't overcharge it or over discharge it. And this runs for several hours without any difficulty at all on this. Of course you could use different power sources. You could use something like this. One of the little battery pack um, uh, cell phone chargers would give 5 volts to operate it. It's happy anywhere from about 3.5 up to about 5 volts. You could also power it from the track if you had track pickups, but one of the things you deal with uh, if you use track power is you're going to have some dirty or some, some intermittent power. You're going to need some capacitors or uh, filters in there to make sure that you get good clean electricity, whereas when you're running with battery, that's not an issue at all. Now, as far as future plans with this, I'm quite happy with the way the boxcars turned out. Uh, I want to take the HO, which now is only on one side, you can see the, uh, the back of this particular display. I'd like to take two of the displays and mount them back to back so that I have in essence the same thing that I have here where the message is being displayed on the front and on the back. Uh, the difficulty with that is it becomes quite heavy. We might be pushing the ability of an HO flat car or gondola to hold that might be a little bit uh, unstable, but I'm going to give it a try. As I said, it works well with the, uh, the single direction, so we can certainly do that, have it on the outside of whatever loop we happen to be running, but uh, front and back would, uh, would be a nice addition. Uh, if you have any questions about how all this is implemented, most of them hopefully are answered on my webpage. If you go to trainelectronics.com and look under projects, you'll see a detailed webpage that talks about how to put this together. It has schematics and photographs and parts lists and so on and so forth. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me either at info at trainelectronics.com or dave at davebodner.com. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a chance to uh, give this a try. And if you do, please let me know. Thanks.